In this video, I will be explaining the BCA third semester subject Applied Mathematics as prescribed by Usmania University and other universities of Telangana. We will go through the important questions and answers one by one. Let's begin with a quick revision. Unit 3 first important short question is Define column space and null space. Column space and null space, simple definition. Column space, kernel A. The column space of a matrix A is the set of all possible linear combinations of its columns. It represents all vectors that A can produce when you multiply it with some vector X. In simple words, column space is equal to all outputs AX can give. Example. If a is equal to, then column space is equal to span of, null space, null A. The null space is the set of all vectors X such that, AX is equal to 0. In simple words, null space is equal to all solutions of AX is equal to 0. Example, if, A is equal to, then, AX is equal to, so, null A is equal to span 1, 1. Easy way to remember. Column space outputs. Null space inputs that give 0. Perfect for quick recall in exams. Next important short question is. Show that sum of two subspaces is a subspace. Let U and W be two subspaces of a vector space V. Their sum is defined as We need to show that U plus W is also a subspace of V. Proof simple steps To prove something is a subspace, we check three conditions. 1. Zero vector is in U plus W. Since both U and W contain the zero vector, 0 plus 0 is equal to 0 U plus W. 2. Closed under addition. Take any two vectors. Add them. Since U is a subspace and W is a subspace, so their sum is again in U plus W. 3. Closed under scalar multiplication. For scalar K, K U plus W is equal to Q plus KW. Since subspaces are closed under scalar multiplication, Q and KWW Thus K, U plus W, U plus W. Conclusion Since all three conditions hold, U plus W is a subspace of V. Easy example. Let U is equal to span 1, 0. W is equal to span 0, 1. Then, U plus W is equal to span 1, 0, 0, 1 is equal to R2. A subspace again. Easy memory trick. Sum of subspaces stays a subspace because adding valid vectors keeps them valid. Next important short question is 3. Define linear transformation. Definition of linear transformation. A linear transformation is a special type of function between two vector spaces that preserves addition and scalar multiplication. Let T, VW be a transformation. It is called linear if it satisfies two properties. 1. Additivity. T, U plus V is equal to T, U plus T, V. 2. Homogeneity, scalar multiplication. T, Q is equal to K, T, U. If both properties hold for all vectors U, and all scalars K, then T is a linear transformation. Simple example. Let T x y is equal to 2 x to y. Check. T u plus v is equal to. So T is linear. Easy way to remember. A linear transformation is simply a rule that does not bend, break or distort vectors. It only stretches, shrinks, rotates or flips them perfectly and proportionally. 
That's why we call it linear. Next important short question is 4. Define linear dependence and independence of vectors. Linear dependence and independence of vectors. Linear independence. A set of vectors is called linearly independent if none of them can be written as a combination of the others. Mathematically, vectors v underscore 1, v underscore 2, v underscore nare linearly independent if the equation has only the trivial solution. Linear dependence. Vectors are linearly dependent if at least one vector can be written as a combination of the others. That means the equation above has non-zero constants c underscore 1, c underscore 2. Simple example. Vectors 1, 0 and 0, 1 are independent. You cannot make one from the other. Vectors 2, 4 and 1, 2 are dependent. Because 2, 4 is equal to 2, 1, 2. Easy to remember. If vectors copy each other, they are dependent. If every vector has its own identity, they are independent. Next important short problem is 5. Find the rank of matrix. Find the rank of the matrix. A is equal to. Step 1. Observe the rows. All three rows are exactly the same. Row 1 is equal to row 2 is equal to row 3 is equal to 1 1 1. So the matrix has only one unique row. Step 2. Perform row operations, optional but clear. Take. Now there is only one non-zero row. Step 3. Count non-zero rows. Only row 1 is non-zero. So the number of non-zero rows is equal to 1. Final answer. Rank of the matrix is equal to 1. Easy way to remember. When all rows or columns are same matrix collapses to rank 1. Because effectively you have only one useful row. Perfect for exams. Next unit 3. Long questions. First important long problem is. Let A is equal to and W is equal to. Determine if W is in kernel A, is W in null A? Given A is equal to, W is equal to. We must check. 1 is win kernel A. 2 is win null A. 1. Check if V is in column space, kernel A. To check this, solve. AX is equal to W. Let x is equal to. This gives four equations. Solve the equations, simple steps. From eq, 2. From eq, 4. Substituting back and solving the system gives. A valid solution exists, so. w is in kernel a. 2. Check if w is in null space, null a. For null a. Au is equal to 0. Compute. The third entry is 12, not 0. W is not in null A. Final answers. W is in kernel A. W is not in null A. Easy memory tip. Column space check solve AX is equal to W. Solution exists W is in kernel A. Null space check compute A. All zeros in null A. Any non-zero not in null A. Next important long problem is to find non-zero vector in null A and non-zero vector in kernel A where A is equal to given matrix. A is equal to we need 1 a non-zero vector in null A 2 a non-zero vector in kernel A. Part 1. Find a non-zero vector in null A. We want a vector such that ax is equal to 0. Step 1. Observe column relationship. Column 1. Column 2. Check if they are multiples. True for all entries. 
So columns are linearly dependent null space is non-zero. Step 2. Solve the null equation. Since. So. Choose a simple value, let. Then. Non-zero vector in null A. Part 2. Find a non-zero vector in kernel A. Column space, kernel A, is made from columns of A. So any non-zero column is automatically in column space. Take column 1. This is a valid non-zero vector in kernel A. Final answers. Non-zero vector in null A is equal to. Non-zero vector in kernel A is equal to. Easy memory tip. Null space solve AX is equal to 0. Column space just pick a column. Next important long problem is 3. Find the basis for null A and kernel A where A is equal to. Given matrix. A is equal to. We have to find. 1 basis for null A. 2 basis for kernel A. Part 1. Find basis for null A. We must solve. Ax is equal to 0. Let. X is equal to. We row reduce A steps already shown simply. After row reduction, we get the RREF. This gives. So null vector. X is equal to. To avoid fractions, multiply by 12. X is equal to. So a basis for null A is. Basis of null A. Part 2. Find basis for kernel A. Column space is formed by the pivot columns of A from RREF. Pivot columns is equal to first, second and third columns. So take original matrix columns. These are linearly independent. Hence the basis is. Basis of kernel A. Final answers, easy to learn. Basis for null A. Basis for kernel A. Easy memory trick. Null space solve AX is equal to 0 the free variable gives basis. Column space pivot columns of original matrix give basis. Next important long problem is. 4. Determine if V, V, V is linearly independent or linearly dependent where. V1 is equal to, V2 is equal to, V3 is equal to. Given vectors. We must check if the set, V underscore 1, V underscore 2, V underscore 3 is. Linearly independent. Or. Linearly dependent. Method. Check if the only solution to. Is. Form the matrix. A is equal to. We check if that A is not equal to 0 independent. Step 1. Find determinant. That A is equal to. Compute the minors. First term is 0. Second term. Third term. Now add. That A is equal to 0 5 8 is equal to 13. Step 2. Conclusion. That A is equal to 13 is not equal to 0. So the only solution to is. Therefore, the vectors are linearly independent. Final answer. The vectors are linearly independent. Easy memory trick. If that is not equal to 0 vectors are independent. If that is equal to 0 vectors are dependent. This is the fastest method for three vectors in R3. Next important long problem is 5. Determine whether the set S is equal to V, V, V is a basis of R3 where V1 is equal to, V2 is equal to, V3 is equal to. Given vectors, we need to check if S is equal to V1, V2, V3 is a basis of R3. Step 1. Recall the condition for a basis. A set of vectors forms a basis of R3 if the vectors are linearly independent and there are exactly three vectors 
same as dimension of R3. Here, we already have three vectors, so we just need to check linear independence. Step 2. Form a matrix and find determinant. Form matrix A with V1, V2, V3 as columns. If that A is not equal to 0, the vectors are linearly independent, they form a basis. Step 3. Compute determinant. Det A is equal to Compute minors 1 by 1. Multiply by 2 2 minus 22 is equal to 44. Multiply by minus 2 dash 2 minus 9 is equal to 18. Multiply by minus 8 8 1 is equal to 8. Now add dash 44 plus 18 8 is equal to 34. Det A is equal to 34 is not equal to 0. Step 4. Conclusion Since Det A is not equal to 0, the vectors are linearly independent. Also, there are 3 vectors in R3. Therefore, S is equal to V1, V2, V3 forms a basis of R3. Final answer Yes, the set S is a basis of R3. Easy memory tip. Determinant is not equal to zero vectors are independent form basis. Determinant is equal to zero vectors are dependent cannot form basis. This is the quickest method for three vectors in R3.